Hello everybody, this is Llamas22 with episode 5 on the Hermit Light server. If you remember from last episode, FDP and I said that we were going to build a minigame. And we've cleared out this whole area all the way down to what is this Y equals 65 and we may go lower too. But we've been grinding it out and we finally completed digging out this whole area. So this is where the dungeon is going to be, the decked out dungeon. We have a little creeper spawning over there, going to have to fix that, light it up a little bit. Um, but I also did a little bit of work on the side of the mountain here as well, just getting in a little bit more grass and we will be terraforming it just like over here, but it's not my biggest priority right now since I want to focus more on the inside. That being said, uh, I don't plan on really working on here this episode, I'll save that for next episode when we can get in another voice call with FDP, but I want to show you guys um, some of the redstone mechanics that we have, and I'll actually hop over there. So we are on our server right now, and yeah, there it has like essentials and stuff, um, but you can see uh, this is like really small actually. But this is what the dungeon itself is going to look like. It's going to be sort of decked out, except not as straight. It's going to have curves and stuff. But the objective of the game is you're going to have lodestone compasses, which, because of some weird world edit thing, we can't actually use compasses. So instead we have redstone, and pretend the lodestone compass points right here. So we throw in the redstone, and a door opens up. And once we go here, then the door closes up. And we decided not to look up any tutorials on YouTube and just build everything by ourselves. So uh, we had a couple of designs and I went ahead and compacted this one. And I think it works pretty well. And I think as far as the redstone system goes, this is pretty much the best system that can possibly be made with this. But let me know if you guys have any other systems that would work better than this because I'd always like to learn redstone myself. And over here we have some randomizers for the second floor because we're going to be doing a bunch of randomized doors and stuff so let's say once you finish a task here or whatever uh, it's not going to be just tasks there's also going to be parkour and things like that and also it's not going to be the same I think it's 8 by 8 size it's going to be larger but the randomizer will make one door open and not both of them and that'll be able to mix up the playing experience for the players. And then over here is like our little, uh, what would you call it, scale building of it. So this is the entrance. This is by uh, where Yonders and FDB's uh, area is on the actual server. So you come in and then there's like a wall of rules right here and then uh, I think we're gonna have a leaderboard here and then up here is just a really grand staircase going up to the actual uh, dungeon area and then right here we'll have a place where players can store their items and things like that we may have them pay a diamond to get in uh, and right here is gonna be where our fountain is now we were thinking of having a goat here like the fountain has a big goat on it but although we're still hoping to do that right now the goat uh, would be a little bit too big but it still looks awfully fancy uh, so we're gonna be uh, chipping away at that trying to figure out how to make the goat look the best as possible but we also want water to be coming uh, from the goat so we're gonna have to figure out a way to have water coming down that makes it like come down the whole thing but look nice so that's another thing we have to think about. And then in here is just a larger, this is about the dimensions of the actual build we're working with. So it's a very, very, very rough sketch of what things are. Um, in fact, pretty much no sketch at all. So this is another right here. And as you can see, there's a little bit of parkour. I want a big parkour element in this dungeon. This was one thing that didn't really happen in the Hermitcraft decked out was that there wasn't too much parkour aspect because of course ravagers can't do parkour but we're not going to be using ravagers we're going to be using fully decked out zombie skeletons and maybe some other mobs we aren't sure yet and then it of course has a nice little transition to a cave and we're not sure exactly how to light things up yet 
we may use glow lichen once uh, the mob spawning has to be at light level 0 but for right now it has to be at light level I don't know 11 I think it is so we have to use lanterns or something else like that and then it'll go on like a random zigzag whatever around until we get all of the lodestone compass ports done so this is one lodestone compass port right there and we will have more around the dungeon but yeah this is just our basic layout for how things are gonna go and it's gonna be expanded upon once FDP and I are able to get in another call so until then we'll be working on other stuff that needs to be done on the hermit light server and speaking of that server I'm gonna go join that back right about now ah amazing how cuts like that are made I, ju I just jump from one server to another and you guys don't even know about it um, so we're back here like I said, I'm not probably going to be uh, building here in this episode, which is fine. Oh, there's a zombie down there. Goodbye. Uh, but what I did want to do is talk to you guys about a couple of other future plans I have and actually get working on one of those today. So, last episode, we finished our build, which was a moss farm. Uh, we still haven't d made an actual dripstone farm. I started work on it and then it actually didn't come out looking as great as it did in my head. So you can see it right there. Uh, it was going to be a factory type of thing with like big smokestacks, but I just didn't like how dark it was. And I decided to uh, just get rid of it. Of course I haven't actually gotten rid of it yet because I did want to show you guys first uh, before I did. But this was also a long time of grinding too because I got a shulker full of uh, blackstone and that took a while because I don't have a piglin trading system. Over here we have a moss farm which is currently working. Uh, we only have one. We may be able to fit another one up there and then two more here. Uh, and we should be getting some bone meal soon. Once these two chests fill up all the way then these two chests will fill up with bone meal and then these will be regular, this will be bone meal, and so on. So it should work well like that. Yonder is supposed to be making a uh, professional storage system for this, but until then, we'll have it like that. And I haven't really AFK'd much over there. Same goes for that area where the YNL uh, HQ is. We haven't done anything really down here since the last episode, just more digging. Over here, this is where things got um, very good is we made a couple of changes to the gunpowder farm up here because of the way the server mob rendering works because of paper uh, we weren't actually getting too many spawns so the creeper farm was very ineffective but with that new afk spot we're getting loads of creepers i did an overnight creeper grind thing where i was just afking up there and when i came back in the morning uh there were we didn't have this shulker box loader at the time. We had, I think, 12 chests and a bunch of hoppers. Every single thing all the way back here was filled up with gunpowder and I saw items despawning up there just because we moved our AFK platform down a couple of blocks. So that was really good. And because of that, I decided to make a shulker box loader so I don't have to keep on filling shulker boxes manually and stuff. So this was a really nice design. I'll link the maker of this in the description. And yeah, we have a bunch of gunpowder. I actually gave some away as well. So we have a lot there. And also Yonder has 12 shulker boxes of gunpowder at his base. So we're doing very good. We'll probably never need to buy rockets again. But what we will need is paper. And I just struck a deal with Jolk where he gave me a shulker box full of uh, sugar cane. So that's enough paper for a long time. But although we have plenty of paper now, we will probably not have enough. And the reason for that is because I'm thinking of another mini game. I'm already working on one with FDP, but at the same time, I'm also gonna be working on another way smaller one. And this is probably gonna be in one of the shopping districts where if you remember from last episode, we were talking a lot about what to do in the shopping districts, especially the themed ones. And so I decided to make a mini game in the ruins shopping district. And what we're going to be doing there is paintball. 
with fireworks. So the way this is going to work is I have a crossbow here, and although I don't have any actual bursting fireworks with me, uh, what you do is you shoot them, and they hit players, explode, and the players, once they get hit enough, will die. So I think this is going to be a very fun mini game, um, and this also keeps me in the clear because I'm trying not to get the achievement take aim this season, which is where you shoot something with an arrow. And because of this nice little mechanic called a firework, I can actually snipe mobs from far away without arrows. So that's why I'm probably going to need a lot more paper in the future, is because I'm going to be using a lot of fireworks, both in my own fighting mobs and the minigame. So I want to show you guys how I craft these. I have a firework star right here, small ball white, some gunpowder, oh, this is my Llama Llama scuba hat. Uh, if any of you guys have read the series Llama Llama, it's a good series, eye opener, you should definitely read it. Uh, here's a bunch more right here actually, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking this, oh, phantoms, I hate phantoms, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm taking this and putting it into the crafting table just like that and I can stick those back and then what I'm gonna be doing is sticking the gunpowder in there and voila so here we go long-distance white fireworks and now what I can do with these is shoot those phantoms so where are they right there and I'm good at aiming these, by the way. You see how I can hit with all three of them? That's pretty cool. Oh no! Okay, that was a good shot. So you can see it is pretty hard, especially when you're trying to hit a moving target. But it also looks very cool, as you can see over there. So, that's why I think Paintball will be such a fun game. And I got a Phantom Head. I guess that counts as a player kill. So, that's cool. Uh, but it can also damage ourselves. So, if we shoot these down. Ouch. That did one heart. Now, without armor, this actually does a lot more. So, you guys ready? That does three hearts. So, in theory, without regeneration. Because, like, my hearts are regenerating. Uh, without regeneration, you can take about probably four shots before you die. So, okay. So, yeah, paintball is going to be fun. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hit you. So that's a game of paintball, and I want to get started on that this episode, since it's a smaller project, and it doesn't really need to... Uh, take up that much of my time in reality so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over there right now oh no 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 and that is why you never fly with these firework rockets that was kind of dumb okay let me put my armor back on after that and get my actual fireworks into the right place okay that's better um real quick I'm gonna uh, mend my crossbow and then I'll go to the shopping district. So in the ruined shopping district, this is where we're gonna be. Uh, the paintball thing will be very ruined. We're gonna have a lot of like dead trees and stuff. So this is Ruins SD right here. We only have two shops so far. One of them is just getting started by Yonder. And the other one is, uh, I think, Penny and Clark's by Knit and Stridesman. And so they're selling a bunch of enchanted tools and I'm pretty sure really good prices yeah six diamonds per slot which is insane so I'm definitely gonna be doing my shopping here if I ever need new tools which hopefully I don't because then that means I'm dead uh, Penetha and Clark Eths. okay so apparently they make a twist on Penny and Clark's every single time they uh, build one in each of the shopping districts but I think where I want my mini game to be is in this general area right here. I don't want to take away too much from their entrance here, but I think it would be really cool if we could make a little path coming from here and then 
into our mini games. But I do want to get started on just a small little field. So what I'm probably going to be doing is taking some of this part right here. I don't know how far out these boundaries go. I'm pretty sure right here to over here. So what I'm going to do is start mine right here. End it like right here and then go all the way to that side and fill it in with grass. And then that way we'll be able to have a pretty decent playing field and be close to another build so we can potentially uh, merge the two together, maybe bring in some of this terraforming right here, which I think would look excellent. So I'm gonna get the boundary marked out real quick, figure out how much diamond blocks I have to pay, and I'll see you guys in a second, so let's go. Okay, so we got all of this marked out. You can see the little stone spires, and I still don't know how large this is, so I have to do the math still. But whatever the area is, this is where the current playing field will be. And we may expand it further out once we get more diamonds. But for right now, I'm content with this. This will mean that we won't be able to use the super far-flying rockets. We'll have to use either Flight Duration 1 or Flight Duration 2. Because Flight Duration 3 flies way further. It actually goes out into unloaded chunks. My plans for this area are to make a team respawn back here and same thing over here is going to be a team respawn and then have little like boxes where players can hide and shoot each other and then in the middle here a big like command tower type of thing that's of course ruined and kind of in this block palette and this is where players will be able to draw their weapons and shoot players below so that should be fun and yeah I'm gonna figure out how much money I actually owe on this and then I'm gonna come back to you guys once again. Okay, back again. So the plot is 20 by 28, but if we made it 20 by 30, it would be economically better. So I'm gonna do that real quick. What we need to do is just break these blocks right here, move them two more and put them back. And now it's uh, 28 by 30, which uh, is pretty much even to uh, six diamond, five diamond blocks. So I'm happy to move it a couple of blocks because it saves me a good amount of diamonds in the end. So I need to build up here and just like that. So now we have a 20 by 30 plot worth five diamond blocks. So now that we have this, I'm gonna start mapping out where everything goes. Well, actually, before we do, I just wanted to test real quick what Flight Duration 1 Fireworks actually uh, did. So, I haven't tested this out yet, this is going to be a first, so I just want to see how far these fly. And I think it's best to do that underwater because it looks so much cooler. So, I'm going to aim for that turtle right there. Okay, so it still goes a considerable ways. Let's see. Okay, so they still go very, very far, actually. That's way further than the uh, playing field that I have. But it does save two stacks of gunpowder for every stack of fireworks. So I'm still happy with that. Get to save some money. And I do have some materials now so we can get started on mapping out everything. So I'm going to head back over. And now we can finally start our time lapse. <music> of the non-existent time lapse because I wasn't really able to time lapse this just because I kept on having to go back and forth and back and forth uh, getting materials and testing out builds and stuff uh, but that's fine we have a finished product so uh, yeah really happy with this 
Well, when I say finished, I don't mean finished, of course, because this is still very much an early development. But the idea is here, we've got the main tower in the middle, which will soon be able to be accessed below through a series of tunnels. And I kind of want to do it where players can either go in here to shoot people, so you can take your fireworks, can be in here and you can shoot people back in that wall or wherever but up here you also get an even better angle and you can shoot people from further away although you can't hit behind like let's say we're standing here we still can't see the players over that wall which is good that's how I want it to be but let's say if a player is hiding there and is trying to shoot your team you're easily able to just snipe the player and they will die so that's good but underneath in this tunnel system, this is where I think the main area of fighting will be because a lot of players will want to go into the tunnel system to get up here. But the reason we have this grass area in the first clip place, because this place could just be all tunnel system and there's nothing above ground, we want to have incentives for people to come up here and uh, fight. So what I'm going to have is dispensers that will regularly fire up maybe larger ammunition with bigger explosions or maybe quick firing crossbows or something like that. Because mine right here is a very maxed out crossbow. It has every firework enchantment on it. But the crossbows I'm planning to use for this minigame will be unenchanted except if you get one that comes up from a dispenser. So I'm guessing there's going to be one like right here. So if you spawn here you're gonna have to come all the way out here there's gonna be people firing at you and then you have to wait for the dispenser to actually fire which will happen I don't know once every 30 seconds or so in a round uh, but that's the reason that we have this above ground area and if there wasn't an above ground area it wouldn't make too much sense to have a tower here since there's no one to shoot at so I think it evens out the playing field pretty well now as far as an exterior goes for above ground, I'm not too sure what to do for the walls, mainly because I want to melt it up with this build here, of course, but we also need walls. So what I was thinking of was just taking some of those azalea bushes and just making a bush ring all the way around this area, which I think would actually look pretty uh, cool. So that's where I'm going to leave this project for this episode. And next episode, we'll be finishing this and making all of the tunnel system and stuff. And then hopefully we'll be able to get together with FDP or Frequent Falling since I still have an interaction with him that I haven't been able to do yet. So we're going to definitely have an interaction next episode, which I am super thrilled about. It's been a little while since we've done one of those. So that's it for this episode. Thank you guys. Whoopsie. Got to take off my scuba gear. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Hermit Light. Uh, it's been a blast. Hopefully we get this minigame finished by in the next episode, so then we can play it two episodes from now. And as always, make sure to like, subscribe, and subscribe to all of the other Hermit Light YouTubers as well. They're linked down in the description below. So, that's it. See you guys later. Bye!